good. How are you? Good. Ooh, nice. Dude, this this guy, I remember, like, I thought he, he was, like, old. Remember, like, when we were kids, it was like, oh, Jordan, or whatever. Is it Jordan? Was that the older one? Uh, I was. I don't know. I think he was the younger guy, but he still was old to me because we were younger. But now I look at him, the dude's, like, literally nine years old or something. Well, I mean, now he's... He looks quite different. As opposed different. to this, look at this this guy. Let's just so say he looks like he's from New Jersey. That was that was all the rage back then. Though, those giant, the giant shoulders, right? And the pleated pants and the. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I have these cards. I don't. I don't. I was not a New Kids fan <laughs> at all. Like not a one bit. Like I don't know any of their music, but I have have the cards. A lot of them, like a stack. Like jeez, and stack. Dude, that's impressive. And I don't know why. And that's a... I had, I mean, I was like looking back at some of my old cards too. You kind of inspired me to like take stock as to which ones I, what I had. I yeah. was like, some were made sense of, for like what my tastes are. And some were, it like, I was surprised that those even existed. Cool. Like, there was Looney Tunes cards and like Looney Tunes in and of itself makes sense. Like cards of uh, characters, right? Mm -hmm. But like there was some that were, were Looney Tunes like Sports stuff. I'm not a sports guy, so I'm like, I don't know why I, <laughs> nor do I know if they actually had cartoons where these sports came from or if they made the cards specifically for this card set because they weren't like, I watched a lot of Looney Tunes and I don't remember seeing any of these, <laughs> any of these clips that, like any of these shots of what they were from. Yeah, that's, there's a lot of that. Like I, I have a lot of like football and baseball cards and I was never really a big fan of sports either, but I have the cards. Mm -hmm. I know I had Bo, Bo knows baseball and football. I had uh, what Warren Moon, that was like, that was, that dates, that, that gives me a sense as to when my, my time frame of things, Emmett, Emmett Smith, I think was in there, right? Those are, those are people who, I mean, are in sports, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it. I'm not making these names up. Kirby, Kirby Puckett, Puckett was in it. I know about Kirby Puckett. Yeah, I used to sell his, you know, candy bars in elementary school, which feels huh. there's like there's a there's like adult me that looks at this and I'm like, was this was he making bank on any of any of this stuff that had his likeness to it? And if that's the case, was the stuff that we were actually hawking like was there a percentage that was going back or was it all going to whatever it was saying it was supposed to be going to whatever like for a charity or something? It, it seems like it would be. It's one of those things. Yeah, it was like one of those things for school, right? Where you oh, yeah, yeah. I think I ended up just eating the whole box of candy bars would be my guess <laughs> <laughs> that, that was that tracks that tracks with what i know of my of myself back then did you watch a lot of cartoons was it when you were little or is it uh like, no, i mean i did but i'm trying to remember like music that i mean i remember the peewees thing pretty well okay like, Pee because i remember it because it has like two or three parts it's like this weird compound song yeah it's got these two different vibes which we can talk about because i remember that but like mm -hmm. And I remember like the Rugrats theme, which I like. It's going I, back, you know. Yeah, that? I know. And I've been thinking about like doing a little um, cover of the Rugrats theme Ooh. on my weird synthesizers. That'd be fun. Even though with Rugrats, some of the stuff that you've made, it's almost like you could say that that was inspired in some regard by Stu. You know, the dad. Yeah, I, I don't remember <laughs> Stu. Stu. Okay, so the dad, the dad in Rugrats was an inventor and like every episode was like part not every episode but a lot of the episodes revolved around like his hair brained stuff that he made and the kids like accidentally getting into it somehow this wasn't every story but they happened enough times that thinking back when you're older and looking at this and be like he sure made a whole lot of stuff that one of them should have probably been a success <laughs> <laughs> his stuff kind of reminds I mean it reminds me of like the kind of stuff that you do right where you are playing around and creating some new stuff that we haven't really seen on the music scene well maybe I don't know yeah well, I try that I haven't seen on the music scene. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to talk about what the heck this thing is. It's my inspiration machine. What I wanted to do is like take a small little sound and run it through this thing in a bunch of different ways to create like a whole song out of one little thing. Here we go. It's, it's innovative and that's kind of like maybe subconsciously you were inspired by you know the idea of throwing stuff at a wall kind of thing and seeing what works you know there's a lot of nostalgia right now for like 80s stuff i think that kind of just happens in cycles right like people 
get to a certain age and they start to think back about their childhood. And I feel like that goes in like a 15 or maybe 20 year cycle or something. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a little bit longer. I don't know. But like in, in music right now, there's a big obsession, at least among kind of like music tech, the people are kind of like into production and music technology, like a big obsession with tape and like cassettes. Mm. Like you'll see bands putting out their releases on cassette, even though like most people don't even have cassette players. You'll see people using tape players in weird musical ways. Like I've done that where I've taken, I, I got an old tape player and I was able to like put a knob on it, install a knob where you can change the speed of the tape and like mm -hmm. speed it up and slow it down. And like, you know, people are using tape because it's got this kind of 80s vibe, almost like that VHS kind of vibe, that kind of snowy picture mm -hmm. and the warbly kind of like sound quality maybe it's kind of waning in popularity now but there was definitely a phase i think we're still in it yeah. people are just obsessed with that kind of tape tape sound that kind of vintage 80s thing kind of like the whole resurgence of stranger things you know like just this obsession with like all of that old kitschy stuff from the 80s and that's kind of you know like where we grew up obviously i see that in pop culture now a lot i, I mean i think the thing is too is that i mean we we had that and this is a whole new generation where this is all like, it's just, it's all brand new, right? This idea of this is like something new to be discovered kind of thing. It's kind of like when we were, when we were younger, I didn't necessarily have this with a track. I mean, I saw my dad's a track. And I'm like, what, what is this thing that is like a much bigger cassette tape that I had want nothing to do with. Right. <laughs> but he was really excited about it, but he was also still really excited about cassette tapes at the time because i mean he you know is like viewed as like this progression forward now i mean there's a level of i don't know i mean this especially when it comes to digital right there is some element of some of the earlier mechanics sounding better i see it less with cassette and more more with vinyl you know in terms of having a much crisper quality but there's something to the idea of i have this tiny little plastic thing that i could I, that, you know, it's like if I can somehow get a, a Walkman or whatever, I don't even know what they use now, that you could just carry around with you. And this is unique because no one else has it in the way that anybody just could have a, you know, it's like if you have your phone, you, you have your playlist, you have music anytime you want it. And this is one of those things where I enjoy this because I feel like not everybody is doing this, even if everybody who's doing it has the same idea <laughs> that they're the ones, they're the only ones who are doing it helping to you know make yourself the feeling of more having a sense of being more unique when it's really hard i think to do that right now just because yeah. there's an element of finding that new thing first before someone else does that thing and then makes it not unique and that's not that in and of itself isn't unique we that was all the time when we were younger too it was like i'm gonna wear those big was it not the fubu pants what were those the pants that were like those zubas? This, dude i still wear zubos by the way what was the um no it was like the skate this like the skater pants oh was, like a jinko like the big yeah jeans. yeah and i and i remember there's a time it was almost comical how big you could wear we, you people would wear those and it would just get bigger and bigger and bigger until it got so big where you could, you like literally could not walk in them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was people in the whole pant leg. Yeah, it was fun. And that had kind of remnants of the 70s in it when you think about what those look, it was like bell bottoms, bottoms but it was, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I think things go in those cycles a little bit. Cause like when we were in high school, people were wearing like ACDC shirts and like Led Zeppelin shirts. And mm -hmm. now kids are wearing like Nirvana shirts and Pearl yep. Jam. But, you know, there's something about humans that we build relationships with objects, like all these toys that I cracked into, like they just they just like crack open all these memories for you. Because I remember like every like every nook and cranny of this guy's face, you know, like when I was a kid, yeah. I was kind of also, like with mm -hmm. um, with music. Right. Like the first uh, because things used to be more physical, like with music, you'd have to buy the vinyl or the tape. There was an element of scarcity with that. Right. Like you could only have so many of those things, especially when you're a kid, you've only got five bucks here, five bucks there to spend right like the first few cassettes or tapes or cds that i had like i memorized everything about them every part of the liner notes every part of the artwork every part of the like lyrics the the songs obviously because i only had like five or six tapes or cds and and you kind of like build this relationship with it and i don't know if that's as possible now i don't personally build that kind of deep relationship as readily now with just music on spotify or something where it's just Mm -hmm. on demand stream anything and everything all the time because 
I never really force myself to spend hours and hours with one one album, you know, because it's I can just flip to the next thing. Whereas back in the day, mm -hmm. these were my toys and I would just play with these toys endlessly. Whereas maybe now if you're playing video games on your phone, you could get a new game every week and never really. I don't know if kids today build that same relationship with the things that, that they grew up with. Yeah. They probably do to some degree because toys still exist, obviously. But in the digital domain, it's like a totally new way of interacting with like creative output or with, yeah, like art of various types like film and music and shows. Mm -hmm. Part of it was, you know, it's like the experience of getting that thing too and the memories that went along with, with it. You know, you know now, the now ritual to go yeah. to the store and like mm -hmm. go to Toys R Us or go to like down in the valley to look for CDs. Yeah. Um, right, mm -hmm. right. And and it's and also the songs and the meaning of those specific songs tied into the events that were going on. So I mean, like mixtapes were I don't know if you got a bunch of you had had a whole bunch of different mixtapes you'd get, but I remember oh, yeah. you know, I, I you know, it's like that was the biggest thing. Someone made you a mixtape and that was like it's like you're my best friend now. Well, it's like the whole high fidelity. Do you, do you know the movie High Fidelity? I sure. mean, like this whole ritual of like making the mixtape for somebody and how intentional that has to be. Mm -hmm. Thinking about the song order, especially with like a tape, you had to you could only fit a certain amount of time on a side, so you'd have to really think carefully about mm -hmm. which songs go on this side, which songs go on this side. Each side was like kind of its own expression because you had have like that first song on the on the side, the last song, and a, and a few in the middle. So you could think about the intros and the outros and, mm -hmm. you know, like it was very, now yeah. you can do Spotify playlists. I see a lot of people sharing like Spotify playlists and they'll be like five hours long, you know? And it's like, that's cool. That's a lot of great music, <laughs> but like, I'm not going to, if you give me something that's 60 minutes, I can listen to it on repeat for a day and really vibe and find like a, mm -hmm. a, a relationship with it. But like a four hour mix on Spotify, like, it's just not, it's cool, but it's just, it's more like listening to the radio, and less like having a mixtape. I feel like the intentionality has gone away. Yeah. And you can just load anything onto a playlist and it can be any length, you know, you just kind of lose that. Yeah, there's a lot of the meaning, a lot of the meaning behind and the intent behind the songs. Talking about the radio too, it's, it's like, that was also, part of it was like, if you didn't, if you're a kid and you didn't have the money to buy these cassettes, you were waiting by the radio for the song to come on. And sometimes it could take you weeks just to make that mix because you're waiting for that specific song to come on yes i would do that with video too like we would tape like reruns of shows we loved you know oh 100 percent. yeah and that was have, like these terrible tapes with just like horribly like you'd you know they would start recording in the middle of an episode because you got there late or something you know what's funny so, is as as i go back and i looked at some of those tapes that i have too because i have i mean i i have stacks upon stacks part of like the, the the shows themselves that i tape it's less about the shows and it's more about like the commercials the commercials exactly i was mm -hmm. gonna say the same thing after these messages we'll be right back